This is Mike Schoen, Paulson from Wallbeat. You're watching Artisan News. Beyond Hell Above Heaven, with two years, looking back now with two years of hindsight, what was the biggest obstacle in getting it done? You no, know, nothing really comes easily, you know, when you're a PC band touring a lot, you know, you know, you need to find the right time to do uh, other things than just touring, you know, and that's recording, you know, so it uh, it can be a little bit stressful, you know, riding on, 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 on the road backstage and if you're only home for a couple of weeks, you know, uh, you know, I, I know for myself when I'm home, I don't want to think too much about music, but, you know, it's my job. So, you know, it's uh, it can be a little bit stressful to work on it when you come home because there's only a few weeks uh, left at home, then you're on the road again. <clears throat> but, um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how to put it, but um, it, it's always a very interesting um time when you're in that period when writing because I, I lock myself into this bubble where a lot of stuff's going on with with melodies and lyrics and pictures and, and everything and uh, it's all about inspiration so you know if you're not inspired you know you, you don't really want to write because you want to everything has to come straight from the heart and you have to be inspired and you know lucky me I'm always inspired so I always have tons of ideas it's all about for me is to you know to find the good stuff um what inspires you it can be everything you know from music to movies people uh who are around me um you know it, it, can, it can be everything you know so um but at a certain time i was writing <clears throat> beyond hell above heaven um uh i i left my <coughs> former girlfriend and um and i was only ha <coughs> halfway through uh, the writing process and um i met my coming wife a terrific woman and you know we took some time off and went to graceland and got married and you know yeah and you know we we were living in in her, in her her apartment for for uh seven months it was a small apartment and and um i had my dog with me and we were not allowed to have that dog <clears throat> so you know um and and early in the morning there would be people working on the bricks and you know in the apartment so i have to wake up <laughs> very early and take my dog go to the rehearsal room uh, and just write and write and write and and sleep and wait for you know the workers to be over and come home in the small apartment and you know try to smuggle in the dark and still writing and the next morning the same story over all over again but you know what when i look back at uh, on it you know it was you know it was what it was, and I'm definitely proud of that I managed to write the album to the very end. I'm sure she inspired you. She, she definitely, you, you know, you totally, you, you know, yes, yeah, so a couple of songs on that record dedicated to her. But, yeah, we moved out of the apartment and bought a great house out to the water and found some peace and quietness. And, uh, so the next record <coughs> is probably going to be inspired by that peace and quiet <laughs> yeah you know so but, but you know it's i'm very uh, i'm very proud of uh, beyond hell above heaven you know i always work best on pressure but you know it has to be you know pressure that makes sense you know it will always be like that no matter how much time you have or how relaxed you are you know and there will be always be that pressure and that pressure should always be there right. because uh it takes you to a certain limit you know you have to you know be surprised about your own work you know you have to definitely you know so i'm very proud of beyond hell above heaven and uh right now we are writing new songs for the coming albums um and uh yeah we write still on the road and uh when i come home i will put all the pieces together and um and I can do that in peace and quietness in in our, in our house, and uh, I, I look forward to that. And hopefully, there will be a new record out in uh, yeah 
the beginning of the new year. Beginning of the new year, wow. So you write predominantly on the road. Do the other guys come to you with bits and pieces, or do you go to them with an idea of a song that you have with lyrics, and then you build it around that? You know, uh, I always wrote all the music, and uh, uh, and uh, when I have a song, I will show it to John, the drummer, and. Uh, you know, we, we will start jamming the riffs and I'll put on the melodies and then the other guys come in and we show them what we have. And uh, that's basically how it works. And now and then, you know, uh, they will they will come up with some good ideas. And uh, um, But mostly if they see I'm writing backstage, they, you know, they can't stand being in the room listening to the same riff 20 times all over again when you just want to have some peace and quietness. So uh, they always leave the room when I'm writing. So... Um, I don't know if that's a compliment, but you know, it's a, they just want you know me to have some peace and quietness they want to disturb and disturb the artistic. Yeah, yeah they and, want to disturb the writing. So, but now then I bring them in and show them the ideas and stuff like that. And you know, the the ideas I get on the road will not be the same ideas I will have at home. So you know, it's a good combination of riding on the road and and have the peace and quietness at your own home, riding and put those pieces together. Um, so that's how actually how it works. And you guys are, you've got a big following in Denmark, and you're starting to get a huge following here. You, have you found like more and more people have just been coming to shows and gravitating? And what's the fan reaction? Well, the fan reaction is, is, it's great, and you know we're very thankful for all the great response. And you know our shows is going amazing, and good, and uh, you know it's it's interesting for us to see how it works now over here because you know it's it's almost like. It was in Europe before it exploded. You know, in Europe we started playing in you know small clubs, and now we play arenas. You know, so we we sense some of the same thing again over here. You know, it, it's just a, about to explode, and uh, you know the dedication from the fans and and the loyal, <coughs> loyalty and everything is 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 great. You know, we love using our time to talk to the fans before the show and after the show. And just listen to what they have to say, and you know it's uh, it's always interesting. Um, it's humbling when you get to actually sit down and talk to a fan that really loves your music. Yeah, because you know it inspires you. Exactly, that's that's the word. You know, it's it's very inspiring to to hear those people talk. You know, because you know it means something to them. And you know, I'm a fan of music myself, so I I totally understand you know their feelings. What so. Else do you listen to? Like, what inspires you? Everything, you know, it's a, not like I'm listening to everything, but, you know, if, <clears throat> I, I don't care too much about styles. You know, it, if, if a song is good, then it really doesn't matter what it is. You know, uh, as you can see, I have a King Diamond t-shirt on, you know, he's he's definitely the best. And uh, love Iced Earth. And um, we have those guys, uh, Iced Earth with us on the road right now with Hell Yeah, Hell Yeah, amazing band. So, you know, it's a great package. And um, so... But, you know, between that, I'm listening to a lot of old stuff from the 50s and, uh, you know, stuff like Elvis and Johnny Cash and Little Richard and Chuck Berry, Jerry Lewis, Fats Domino, but also a lot of artists from that certain time who were standing in the shadows of those legendary performers. Um, so uh, I listen to some gospel and blues and, um, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what it is, as, as long as it does something to you and it touches you, you know, and then, you know, I can definitely be inspired. It's a small show. It's fairly intimate. Tomorrow and Sunday is Metallica, is Orion. Your mindset, because you seem very relaxed now, like, how, what is your mindset today as opposed to going into a huge show? Do they Are they different or are they the same? They're pretty much the same because, you know, we're doing the same stuff. You know, it's our songs. And, of course, the set list would change now and then. But, you know, we know where what we are going into. You know, we, we've been doing this for a long time and uh, and uh, lots of times. You know, that's nothing to be scared of. You know, we, we just love what we're doing. And, uh, <clears throat> um, but, of course, you know, you're excited and, and everything. That's that's the way it should be. You know, you're, you're looking forward to every show, each show. And um, it's not like we're never nervous, you know. Uh, we're, we're never really nervous. We're just excited, you know. We just want to go in there and, and, and bring the music. And, of course, being part of the Orion is, is a huge uh, accomplishment and a compliment for us to be able to do something like that. So many great bands. And, you know, 
uh, that Metallica still invite Volbeat, you know, to be part of their shows. It's, uh, you know, we can't thank them enough. You know, we've been touring with those guys a couple of times and, you know, it's it's very inspiring and, you know, it's, uh, they're true gentlemen. So it's uh, being part of that package is something that they're very proud of. Talk to me about the name Volbeat. They want to know really from you, not from Wikipedia. Not oh, from yeah, okay. Internet. Where did the name Volbeat come from? <clears throat> I had another band before Volbeat called Dominus, which were a death metal band. And um, the third record we did, we called that uh, Vol.Beat. Um, and, you know, Vol was for volume and Beat was for the rhythm or the beat, you know. So I just removed the dot and that became Volbeat. Talk to me about the strength, the sound, the songs. How do you look back on that album? We always look back on our albums when um, when we write new material. You know, you know, it's uh, it's great to be inspired by your own stuff because sometimes you forget the old records, uh, and now and then it's, it's great fun to put those records back on and see where were we at that certain time. You know, because there's still a lot of great ideas that you can still you know capture something in it and be inspired by your own stuff so you know um, they all have a good piece of important history for volbeat you know it's not like i can sit here and, and pin out a favorite record with volbeat because every record has been very important when it comes to our career and the songwriting so um very personal to you it is you know it's you can always say that the first record is the, the you know the fundament of everything you know, so uh, that's probably how I look at it. It's the foundation, and you've built it from there. You know exactly. It's come from that. Yeah. It's your first thing. It's interesting. Um, another fan wants to know, how did you cover I Only Want to Be With You? Is it the Samantha Fox version? Oh. That guy? <laughs> Sometimes people should, you know. No. <laughs> really? There's a fan that asked that. A fan. <laughs> wow. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, they should dig a little bit more into history yes. when it comes to music, know. you know. But it's a well, fun... Well, that's disappointing, too. We can get into that later. We can... uh, that's another question. You know, it, it is fun because sometimes people say, why do you play a Samantha Fox song? And, you know, it's... you really want to slap the guy. <laughs> I say, well, it's really not a Samantha Fox song. You know, if uh, you know, it's an old song from the 60s by Dusty Springfield. And, um, you know, I know that because I listen to all that stuff from that certain time so I can't you know uh, cannot force anybody to know anything about that if you if you don't listen to songs from the 50s or 60s how should you know you know and everybody you know every guy knows Samantha Fox you know he she had something you know, <laughs> and we all know what that was and you know it's but um it is what it is and uh for us it's, it's just an important song because it's it's a great song and uh we heard so many bands covering that that song, and you know, uh, we were just fooling around with it in the rehearsal room, and you know, we said, "Why not try this song out live?" And now it's a steady live song. You know, it's it's a great song. A lot of bands go back to the fifties and sixties. Pearl Jam did it. Hmm? The song. Um, is there anything else that you would want to cover from that genre? Is there something that you have been toying around with? Something else? Around? Yeah, you know, we always been fooling around with a lot of different stuff. A lot of things that people wouldn't be aware of you know what it is and you know it all depends on how it works out in the rehearsal room and if we think it makes sense and, and everything so uh, you know it, it could be anything um tell us what's happening with thomas oh you know it's i cannot go into details because you know it's when it comes to that you know, it's, it's always um you know it's just like a marriage somehow you know sometimes it, it uh <clears throat> it works and sometimes it don't and, and you know in, in 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 a marriage you know you you work on the problems to you know to fix it and 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 move forward to in, in in a wish that things are getting better or you can solve the problems together um and sometimes you really can't you know and uh if you can it, it's it's better you know to split up so uh, you know um so it's always sad to you know change band members out but you know sometimes it's necessary to even to to move forward and uh I mean, you know we all wish thomas the best in his future with his family and and what he's about 
to do. I don't know what he's doing today, but uh, you know, hopefully he's doing good. I, I wish him all the best. You know, he's he's been good in in in, in Volbeat, You know, but you know, it's as I said, sometimes things just doesn't work out, and there are reasons for that. But we just like to keep that for ourselves. No, of course, yeah. of course, it's personal. Yeah, you but know, anyway, like yeah. yeah. So you know, he was a good performer and and and, and all that. And um, as I said, I, I I wish him all the best. And but you know. We we are. This is a new chapter, and you know he. I just wish him the best. What's up for the next chapter for you guys? What are you up to for the next three or four months? Besides, tell us about the new album that you're gonna that you're writing. Um. Yeah, right now we're we're doing this tour um, with with Hilly and Iced Earth, and um, we have a, a headliner show in at Wacken, Germany, a festival, and then we go home and write. The new material finished to the very end, and then we go into the studio, and there will be a release next year, and then it's back on the road again. Do you have any songs written? What? Do you have any songs written? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I definitely think we have right now. I would say we have maybe seven songs written. That's no words yet. I'm still, you know flirting around with words and everything i have the melodies and all the guitars is there and you know we, we can play it and um just small uh minor details that needs to be fixed but i definitely have um uh, it's you know i definitely have material for at least two albums so i just have to you know pick the right stuff out and a lot of it's gonna be trashed and deleted and other stuff might just you know end up on future coming records yeah